the Bible says, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the, la and the life I now live, I live for Christ who loved me and gave himself for me. This is the language of life and death. So it's really fascinating as far as Christian discipleship goes. How do you become a Christian that is flourishing, that is, that is successful? Jesus talks about this kind of language all the time. Jesus said, uh, unless you love me more than your father and mother and your wife and your family and everything else, you cannot be my disciples. Very radical, strong statement. And Jesus said, unless you take up your cross, you cannot follow me. Taking cross means you died to, to yourself. Now again, the word die and comes in again. Now C.S. Lewis expounded this beautifully. He said, God is not interested to come out and pick up, to chop off a one little branch in your life, the other branch to trim you, like uh, basically to make you better. Of course, he wants you to become better. However, it's not just about becoming better because that's not possible. The only way C.S. Lewis works, when I first heard it, it hit me so hard, I begin to realize he is right. He said that Christ, God is not going to come in and trim here and there a little bit here and there um, to make you better. But eventually, God is coming, to, and the Bible is saying, God is coming to kill you, kill your old self in order to become a, dis, a new man. You know, it's not like God is going to kill you. You know, that sounds so terrible, right? I mean, God is coming to kill you so that your old self die. You know, it, it, it takes death for new life to come. That makes sense, right? I mean, it's impossible for you to quit the habits of this and that, the sinful self and nature, unless you die, dude. That thing has to die. Have you, have you plow? Have you, uh, you see that here? It's not today. Today we're totally in spring mode now. All right, so it is it is becoming more and more a spring spring like weather, and uh, truly uh, the uh, the winter coat is coming off, and we are moving into a spring mode now. What a beautiful day today, right? So you see, what I'm trying to say is, look at this lawn here, beautifully. And I, I used to have a lawn. <laughs> But now I don't have a much of a lawn, uh, you know, moved to New York City now. So when we were in uh, Long Island, okay, in Sile said, we used to, uh, in summertime, grass begin to grow. When grass begin to grow, guess what? What else begin to grow? Somebody, weed. The weed begin to grow. We do still have a little patch of land behind our house. My wife and I do that. So you got to pull out the weeds. You know something about weeds? If you don't kill it, if you just trim it off, snap off the heads and all this stuff, as long as the roots is down the earth, it will spring back sometime. It will never go away. You know, right? That's why you got to pull out the roots. There's so much work. Oh, that's why people use weed killer to spray on it, just kill the whole, the whole nine yards, the whole package deal. <laughs> Uh, but it is, it is, you know, it just, the concept is the same for us to become Christians. Unless God pull out the roots of our, of our sinful self, the lust and the, the indulgence of our flesh and everything, it will come back again. It will linger. You may put it off now, but later it comes back and haunt you again. And perhaps even worse. The only way is pull the roots. When you pull the roots of the weed, what, does it, what, do you, what have you just done to the weed? You killed it. That's it. That's what Jesus said. Unless you take your own cross, you can't be my disciples. That's what it means. You have to die to yourself. Oh, philosophically, it really makes sense. It's so powerful. Um, C.S. Lewis is absolutely spot on. I love this guy's uh, exposition. 
I think he's the most, the best apologetics guy in the world. <laughs> um, it's not, he said, it's not gonna, I know that John 10 is talking about the Lord is, is the vine, we are the branches. The Father comes in and trim the branches. Whatever is bad, trim it off. That's a different context. There's a one who remains in Christ. The work is ongoing. In a sense, that is absolutely true. Through. I need to balance it up now. Okay, so let me just say this. Uh, so, the killing of your old self is a continual ongoing process. Let's start out with trimming, actually. Now, if I jive, if I dovetail these two together, it kind of makes sense now. Because you can't put it out right away. You go to, because we're not like weeds, you know. The sinful nature deep down recess in our inner soul takes time to weed it out. So, but our mindset got to be ready that to really do a job, the thorough job, you need a thorough job to be a Christian, seriously. You can't do a half past six job or half half past job to to uh to try to to uh to enter the kingdom of god basically that part of you has to die i have been crucified with christ i've died my inner my old self is dead christ must arise our success and enjoyment as a christian working with god and fellow uh, Christians and families and loved ones and friends and also reaching out to the new ones depends on how much we have died in Christ how much we have died to Christ and Christ's new life begin to to spur it out in our life hallelujah Christ's new life cannot spur it out cannot grow until and unless the old has been killed or perhaps they go on to, uh, let me correct that. I think the two go on together concurrently. Yes, I stand with that. So that, um, like John the Baptist said, he must increase, I must decrease. It's an increase, it's an incremental, you know, keep going, it's an ongoing thing. One day we get there and we we'll meet with him. But now, the, the idea, the concept is clear. We must let the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, kill what is the sinful part of our lives. Thoroughly, we must be willing to give up and give Him to Christ and let Him breathe in the new life unto us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.